hard costs are modeled as a bell-shaped curve because empirically this is the way the construction budget is spent over the course of the construction schedule for buildings. You start out incurring costs slowly, gain speed, and then slow down again at the end. As a result, what we do in our model is allocate our total hard cost budget according to the percentages for the bell-shaped curve that matches our construction schedule duration. Our major hard cost line items in rough chronological order are relocation and undergrounding of utilities, excavation of the site, environmental cleanup or abatement, pouring of the foundation, construction of the underground parking structure if the building has one, construction of the above ground tower, application and installation of the tower's skin and windows, and then construction of the public spaces. As we noted earlier, we look at our tenant improvements separately in the post-construction phase, and these will be modeled based on our lease-up assumptions. And lastly, we can never forget to include ample contingency but we note that the contingency does not apply to the tenant improvements budget. Next, let's take a look at the hard costs over the course of the entire 60-month timeline. We note that we don't have any hard costs until month 18, when we begin our utility relocation. The hard cost spending then follows the approximate bell-shaped curve for the assumed construction schedule. And then as we finish construction on the base building in public areas, we note that we have a plateau, which is the payment over time of the tenant improvement allowances for the tenants building out their interiors, followed by a final lump sum payment to the last of the tenants. We note that the values reflected in the graph contain our hard cost contingency as well, but that once again, this contingency does not apply to our tenant improvement allowances since these are negotiated amounts and any interior construction costs above the allowance are borne by the tenants. Next, let's look at soft costs. Unlike the hard costs, soft costs are incurred throughout the entire project. The major soft cost line items include the developer fee, which is an allowance charged against the project that you will want to cover your overhead associated with the project, the equity fees, accounting, insurance, letter of credit and bonding fees, real estate taxes, impact taxes levied by the jurisdiction such as a school's impact tax, utility costs, legal costs, design which includes architecture and landscape architecture, multiple consultants and testing and inspection fees, permit fees, marketing and miscellaneous costs, leasing commissions, and of course, contingency. Next, let's look at the soft costs over the course of the project timeline. You will see that we have soft costs starting in month one of the project and going through month 60. In contrast to the allocation of hard costs, there is no typical curve off of which soft costs are modeled. Each transaction is unique and it will be the total soft costs in each period that end up defining the curve for your transaction. The areas of the graph that represent the largest cost are associated with the initial design of the building and in the case of the four spikes, the payment of leasing commissions. We see when we put the hard costs and soft costs on the same graph that they differ considerably, both in scale and timing. Here the hard costs are in red and the soft costs are in blue. The soft costs never peak as high as the hard costs do and they begin as we noted in month 1, whereas the hard costs don't begin until month 19. Next, we have furniture, fixtures, and equipment, also known as FF and E. These are the costs associated with fitting out the lobby of the building with millwork and art and furnishing the fitness center. These costs are going to come at the very end of construction because we are dealing with physical space and construction logistics, and these items would be at risk of being damaged if they were installed while there was still heavy construction foot traffic going through the building. 
In our hypothetical transaction, we have modeled the FF&E costs to come in one period towards the end of the construction schedule. Because we have kept in mind that furniture, carpet, and tile are often long lead time items, we have modeled the FF&E costs to start several months prior to the end of construction to ensure delivery in time for installation. Next, let's move on to our financing costs. Just to review, in a typical real estate development transaction, equity will be invested first before debt will be funded by the bank. As you close on the loan, you will likely have to pay any mortgage broker fees, as well as origination fees to the bank, and a mortgage recording tax. And the moment you begin to draw down principal, the interest clock starts. Other financing costs include lender-related legal expenses. When you structure your construction loan, you will want it to accrue or accumulate the interest until the building starts to have positive net operating income less interest. Otherwise, you will have to pay interest all along during the course of the development, and you will need to have a separate source of funds to do that. From an accounting standpoint, you will count this accrued interest as a financing cost through the point of receiving the building certificate of occupancy. We note that if you have a mezzanine loan or a land loan, you will also have all of these same items related to those layers of financing as well. Lastly, you will account for your negative cash flow during the lease-up phase here in your financing costs as an operating deficit. Next, let's take a look at our financing costs over the course of the project timeline. The spike in month 19 is a reflection of closing on the construction loan and comprises the origination costs and lender fees. The upward slope is the capitalized interest, which continually increases as we draw down the loan and our outstanding balance increases. The downward slope reflects the fact that we are signing tenants and more rent is coming in and thus our operating deficit is decreasing as more rent comes in. And finally, our financing costs end up as zero after we repay the construction loan in full. Finally, let's take a look at all of our costs on a single graph, which is a very interesting and educational exercise. We've truncated the vertical scale so that we can retain some detail in the items that don't have as much in any one period. The purple line is our land, the blue are soft costs, the red are hard costs, the green are financing costs, and the orange are FF&E. Blending all of these costs together, this is how the total project cost shows over the course of the 60-month timeline. Thank you for visiting realestatefinancialmodeling.com. To learn more about real estate development financial modeling, purchase one of our product modules.